Yeah! Fuck you looking at. Let me get some fucking money. Get this fucking drink on. Yeah! Oi! Talking about. John, do you have any Xanax? What does it look like a fucking drugstore to you? I look All like right, fucking. Okay, a nickel bag? 15 bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. Hey. If that money doesn't show, then you owe me, owe me, owe. Okay, in this my head with my face, Silent Bob. We launched Jane Silent Bob reboot yeah, this week. That's what we're talking about today. A, what a fun intro. <laughs> what a what a way to start. It was a great day. It was so much fun going out there and making that. And middle school me was really happy uh, to have done that. I, I remember being a kid in Florida and looking up and finding the real store and like calling them. And uh, getting to go there and like shoot there and be, meet some of the locals was absolutely hysterical and fun and like a great day. And uh, it was just, I was really excited to go see this movie. It didn't let me down. That was my. That was Anthony Del Grosso, everybody. Yeah. It's not that bad. What do you think, John? Well, thanks for leading us in there, Anthony. I think, I think um, my immediate reactions to Jane Silent Bob reboot uh, were that. Uh, this is this is Kevin Smith coming down to the end of a very long road, and I have to say I think it's probably one of his weakest movies, and um, that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy things about it. I thought it was actually a pretty good movie, uh, but I have I have to say I've, I definitely have missed Red State, but I saw Tusk, and then I missed Yoga Hoosiers, and those are his most recent films. And now we're up to Jane Silent Bob Reboot, which is the immediate continuation of his View SQ universe. So for anyone there at home that is not familiar with who Kevin Smith is, with Clerks, Mallrats, Dogma, or Chasing Amy, I mean, this you can just go ahead and fucking move on from this video because there's so many other things on the internet that, that probably worth your attention. Yeah, it's fine. That's it. It's just another one. It is what it is. It's a Jane Silent Bob Reboot. Yeah, I think it's it's for that crowd of people, the people that have seen those movies. Right, and I think that's the also why we all wanted to get together to see and, yeah. and discuss this movie because we all grew up, uh, you know, in the '90s, growing up. Well, I mean, I I caught on to these movies in the late '90s, um, just after uh, Dogma had come out, mm -hmm. and um, I hooked in. To, to that movie and was like, wow, there's something really great here. And then I got a hold of Clerks. Then I saw Mallrats. And I was really hooked, and I really liked the universe that Kevin Smith had made. Um, and I um, think you guys also ha uh, have some personal connections with Kevin Smith and his movies growing up, right? Yeah, I, I specifically got into it through like the internet in like 2006, 2007, and I think during that second wave of relevancy he had, then I caught on right as Dog uh, Clerks Two came out, which is a good movie. Uh, you know, like it's got the good dialogue sequences and like. You know, like, it's good writing and good pacing and good structure. And, and this movie, you know, very similar to the, you know, uh, it's a reboot of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which they make, they definitely let you in on. And it's got some great jokes and it's fun and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see Kevin Smith and it reminds me of my childhood, but it's just like, it, it, it's just like, to see it go him regress in such a way. Yeah, you know, he, this is him on his downswing. On his now. downswing, like big yeah. time, like and I, you know, I didn't think it could get much worse than like Tusk or Yoga Hoosiers or Red State yeah. or Cop Out or 
Zack and Mary Make a Porno or all the bad movies he's made. In, you know, sure. Since, but out of like his first core like four films out of the gate. Which are just fantastic yeah. like, good movies. You know, Those like, are ones that you that kind of speak to you, that's right? That's right. And yeah. I, I was with, from that era. And then, you know, I like James Dine with Bob Strike Back for sure. It's funny. It's more like a rubber, right? But, uh... I mean, I, I started watching him like they, my father was a big fan of Kevin Smith. I think coming from that generation, he just like really attached to the clerk's characters and working in service and stuff most of his life. And I, I kind of caught it through him owning all those tapes and watching the, the series and all that bullshit. And I always just kind of liked him as like I never thought he was groundbreaking because like his movies are so small scale and I get that that was like a big thing in the 90s with these like super small little movies. I mean even like Reservoir Dogs and all that stuff, Robert Rodriguez. You know, that was just like the film festival thing, and that's why I think Chasing Amy did so well. But I always liked, you know, the irreverence of the Clerk series, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, and Dogma. The series you're referring to, the animated series. Yeah, the series. Yeah, yeah the, the TV series. Yeah. Pretty short run. You owe me five bucks. I don't have five bucks. Take it from the register. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, you know, I had that on DVD growing up, watched that all the time. I love Jane, Silent Bob, you know, I love Strike Back, all that shit. And so that's the kind of stuff I always caught on and, and loved, and I thought Clerks 2 continued that. And while his filmmaking, I think, became less technical and, and, and impressive, because you see a man shoot on, you know, in like super, or in 16 millimeter on like film and black and white, so that's an evocative choice. It's very stylistic, and part of it comes out of cost, and just being like, oh, this is all we have. Yeah. But out of adversity comes, you know, interest or you know, some sort of well, creativity. It does, it, yeah, definitely. You, it, I think like, of uh, that as the black and white one, but then yeah. after that, it's like, oh, well, Mall Rats is just kind of like a normal movie. You know, it's just like kids hanging out at the mall. It's well, fun. Well, it's as if though the Weinstein's called him up and said, like, yeah, we liked the Clerks. Just movie. Do it again. Just do that vibe again. Yeah. But this time, here's a little more money and shooting color. Yeah. And then I watched Dogma, and I love Dogma. Dogma is one of my favorites. Yeah. But it's ultimately like it's pretty a bland shot film for a movie about like the end of the earth and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm as anatomically impaired as a kendo. But ultimately, he's not a very like he's not a cinematic thinker. He just likes jokes, and that's kind of at least what I've always taken from him. Chasing Amy, of course, being really great. Personally, I really connected with that, and uh, with Clerks too. But clerks as well yeah but I, I i never really went for him for being like the like i don't think of him even on the same lines as like a tarantino as like a contemporary or something like i never thought of him as having much to say and right. that's why he made movie about clerks because they were just like just guys slubbing around in jersey you know like that's yeah. just his life but a lot of people weren't exp exposed to that life at that right. point so they're like oh my god a fresh new take but then you you delve a little bit deeper and it's like oh well he's just he's just a guy for he is that guy from new jersey yeah right Jay and Silent Bob are those guys. Yeah. And I, I personally, that never faded for me because like I always liked that, that's fine, but it was never like in my heart. It wasn't like, Kevin Smith, you know, is like a speaker, is, not, is like a vessel for me, you know? For what it's worth, what we're talking about is a filmmaker that thrives mostly on, you know, N nerd culture, centering, pop culture, America. yeah, pop culture references and centering his movies around you know interpersonal relationships, and most of it's usually down to romance. And so then, like, and his, I think his third main theme is just the viewisk universe and at large. You get yeah. every one of his movies in the viewisk universe, of course. Yeah, have the cross pollination of characters. Yeah, but now with all of that out of the way and having covered who Kevin Smith sort of is as an indie filmmaker well, coming even, up through no, the rise. Did anybody really mention his latter half of his movies? Well, Cause I feel yeah. like that's really the point for me is that's the split is yeah, like, like is like up until even Zack and Miri's like that's like the turning point and then Cop Out's full Jersey. terrible. Jersey yeah. Girl. Well, that's that's, that's just in the mix bye -bye. because that's yeah, but that's like in the mix of like bad, but that's. Oh, six he made Clerks too. Yeah. Which is a, which is a and which is yeah, a good, Clerks two is one. actually all right, especially yeah. as a sequel. It's pretty good. I've probably seen it the least out of all of like his good movies. Mm -hmm. No, I saw that in theaters when it came out. And I enjoyed yeah. it yeah. a lot. I saw that yeah. one quite a bit just because the timing yeah, yeah, yeah. of like how old I was. And you know, and there's nothing, and there's something to say about that. I think the reason why Clerks two works so well as. Uh, 
as a later film in his career after the first four really big hits and after he did Jersey Girl and I think, did he do Zack and Mary before he did Clerks 2? No, Zack and Mary I think, after? After. I think that was after. seven. Right, right, right. I think though he had something really personal to say with Clerks 2 just as just the same as he did when he made the first Clerks. And I think that it was a really strong decision for him to say, you know, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna return to these characters and I know it's been a long time, but I still have some unfinished business. There's still some things that I wanna resolve personally, uh, you know, just as, in terms of the relationships between these characters, the relationships between them and the worlds that they're still in. And so it's, it's interesting because then we saw him veer into Zack and Mary make a porno. Which is fine. It's lar I think that's like the most like fine movie. It's the most middle of the road shit. If it wasn't honestly. if it wasn't Kevin Smith, I like it would just be on Comedy Central like in the middle of the night or like <sighs> a Tuesday at two PM. Maybe you know? like ABC Family. No. I mean no, it's about right. porn, that. but that's what I'm saying. It's definitely on like oh, FX or... I, I thought sorry, I thought we were talking about Jersey Girl for a second. Oh, no, that, You're just that's... always thinking about Jersey Girl. That movie's just what happened boring. in Jersey for you? It's just boring. She would die. Anyway, yeah. Um She was a ghost. I really liked him when I was when I was in like high, like early high school, late middle school. We you all know? said that though. And and really like I just related <laughs> yeah. to the film so much. And I really built him up. And then, like, over the years, I've just watched him go just... Right, let's talk about that break, though, in his career, because that's what we want to get down to. Because yeah. then after Clerks 2 was well, did... Zack and Miri. Yeah. And then he made Red State. Well, no, there was Cop Out, which was Cop the first out. movie he did that he didn't write. Right, with Bruce Willis which is like, and Tracy Morgan. Which is, like, the full Hollywood overboard. Cause yeah. Like, Zack and Mary, it's like fine, but it's forgettable. It's just like any yeah. other comedy that came out, and it's Cop just like stars. Just full on disaster. No, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, 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 hell no, 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 I refuse, no, no. Then after, immediately after that decides, okay, that's the end of my Hollywood career. It decides micro to budget. full indie. Yeah. There's a micro budget feature called Red State with John Goodman and decides to do a road show tour with it and decides that's going to be my business model. I'll be, a, I'll be doing podcasts and promoting my work selling comic and, books. and staying connected with my audience and then I'm going to just tour my films around independently and fuck it. So he went full indie and after that he did, he did Red State, he did Tusk and then he did uh, Yoga Hoosiers and then this is now his fourth independent road toured film. But this, those are different than this one in that those are like wholly original and they're mostly like horror-esque movies. Yeah, and they totally. Like a lot more Except like for effects. Yoga Hoosiers. It's kind of, it's definitely goofier. So I haven't seen Yoga Hoosiers. How was that, by the way? That was uh, his last movie the, before I, you're doing this. I think it's like definitely more like loopy and like goofy and it definitely tries to like pay homage and to uh, like Clerks aspects. It is about his daughter and Johnny Depp's daughter as clerks at like a gas station convenience store thing. So it's very like that, yes, exactly. Did you see Yoga Hoosiers? But it's But you're just checked out over the idea. Yeah. Just, it's it, like but it's, Clerks Light. And it's and yeah. it's also like clerks in the out. world of yeah. Tusk, like Johnny Depp shows up for like a moment and Yeah, that that's stuff. another and there's thing. like Kevin Smith plays like a Bratwurst zombie stuff and it's like you know, that movie could have been kind of interesting. I think in the ways I think this movie could have been more interesting is if, like, by reboot or by retreading that idea or those themes, you do something different, but you also exemplify what cl the first Clerks had about it that I liked, was that it was so small-scale, so intimate, and about, like, nothing. Yeah. You know, like, because Clerks is about nothing. Like, it's... And that's ultimately, like, the funny thing is that everybody builds it up to be such an amazing movie, but it's just, like, it's about fucking convenience store clerks. It's just, like, interesting weirdos in Jersey and stuff. Yeah. And it's, like, ultimately, if Yoga Hoosiers was just, like, them two in the thing without stupid nonsense and all this yeah. chaos going on. And it had, like, like, it has funny moments in it. I'd say Tusk has some interesting moments in it. And Red State topples on being entertaining. Like, it, yeah. it almost gets there. But all three of those are kind of middling and is lots of missteps and that's where i think the biggest uh like this uh, newest movie is a line with those in that it's it's it makes some interesting choices or makes get some laughs or some yucks out of me but it's so i think ultimately kevin smith's biggest strength or his his 
strongest theme running in his best movies has to center around people telling stories. And when I think about what he's best at, it's like everyone's always kind of made that immediate connection, especially when he was coming up, like, oh, his dialogue is great. It's like a trademark, you know, style in his movies, sort of like Tarantino has his sort of stamp on his dialogue. You know, Kevin Smith has his definite brand of dialogue. And one thing he's always excelled at in his first four movies, from Clerks to Mallrats to Dogma to Chasing Amy, is like verbal storytelling. He's not afraid to lock you in a room with characters and just have them access a part of their life, a part of their emotions, and bring you into what they've experienced and tell you a story from beginning to end. And just have that be the, the propellant of the film and have that be the central action is the storytelling. And then when he veers off that course, when he gets anywhere into plot hood or any backstory shit and, you know, uh, stupid fucking MacGuffin shit, the monkey, you know, all that stuff. I don't care, you know, that's hardly the core of what he's ever going to get to because anytime someone opens their mouth, I, it's, it's always going to be something with him, you know, he's always going to offer you up something. And so it was really interesting to see how he's going to handle verbal storytelling in this movie because he's going to have most of his dialogue coming out of Jason Muse. Check this shit out. Spread my cheeks so I can see the fucking steak nuggets. And, um, you know, I think when you look at things like Red State and Tusk, I mean, you know, what works about those movies the best is like Tusk is really great. The whole first half of it is really great because you get to focus in on Michael Parks' character, telling you a story, getting you involved in his world, and then by the time you realize what he's just fucking told you, it's too fucking late and you're trapped. And then you actually get into that world and you're like, oh no, and now I'm in the tactile portion of the film and it's just, it's a dead end. There's not any more of what he's good at to keep this moving, so we're stuck here now. Yeah. And you have to just live with it. That kind of happens with this movie. And I feel like I ultimately looked at the film as like, okay, is this is how you're gonna sort of create a summation of all your work and phone up every friend you can for a cameo. This is the wrong movie. You should do that for Clerks 3. Because if you're gonna, if you're gonna come in with what you're good at, which is verbal storytelling, Clerks is exactly your theater for that and where you've done your best work. Clerks 1 and 2 are your <coughs> best movies and where is Jeff Anderson and Brian O'Halloran to give you give us that sweet 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 dialogue that I love so so much cuz like whenever Jeff Anderson just like lays in on all the pop culture references or anything he's trying to give you any points he's trying to make or if any way he's trying to dance around a subject or confuse a stupid customer it's so savory and I just want more of it and this is not that it's more Jay and mm. Silent Bob. It's more like a reverent comedy and like but that's him why making I just fun seem... of himself and just like and being like, oh, I'm a bad director. Yeah, but the self-deprecation is not just lazy. No, and, yeah, and but that's just, why I'm, I, I want to disagree depressing. with you though. Is like I think that this is the that's why this is called the reboot. This is meant to propel. This isn't supposed to be like the end all. This is the last hurrah movie. He wanted all the cameos in order to bolster it. In order to get it to where people like us would go and see it on the road and on the Fathom events and eventually on like video on demand and stuff. Get enough to be able to make his Clerks 3, presumably, show that there is a market so that he can actually reboot the Viewisk universe. That's what he wants, I guarantee it. Do some sort of series, he's trying to do the podcast thing and all that. And because the, the horror comedy things aren't really working, he's got like one more that's coming out or some shit. But, like, Clerks 3 is still, like, TBD, mm -hmm. supposedly. Yeah. It's still coming. And he wants to keep doing it. And I feel like, you know, he wants to keep the Clerks guys out of it so that when they do show, it's like... Because it's like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's like, this is the BVS that's supposed to be like... Because they literally they ape do, on it. Yeah. And they're like, it's BVS, it's Batman, it's, just, it's Jay and Silent Bob, they're back. You know? And it's... It's like that movie and that it's a dud in a lot of ways. I do think that Jay and Silent Bob shine through. Yes, Jason I think they're does such a good job. It was just as good. Back, you know? Both of them. I think yeah, Silent Bob like, is like the fan in me is still there. It's it, it it's just like watching him come out, 
and give it like such like sell this movie to the audience so much like I I've watched this movie at every road show we've been on I I love watching you guys laugh to it you're gonna notice all the people from the past and everything's back you know he sells it in this huge but look way at, but look and at the I other road it. shows he's been on and, and he it, and he was like, on road shows <laughs> watching it with people with Red State yeah. Tusk and Yoga Hoosiers where people are probably just giving like reactions the whole time and this Believe time people it. are like gla clapping like i know this you know because yeah, like so that's true. Yeah. he's just preying on your nostalgia yeah. when we when we saw it people were literally preemptive yeah. clapping mm -hmm. because they thought like anytime somebody would walk in they would just assume that it was a person did you guys notice that yeah, they start clapping like, and then the it'd word? be like uh and it'd just be like the three claps would like stutter and i'm like was he from one of the movies? Why are you clapping just because somebody was in something? Yeah. Like, a lot, honestly... Like Randall's not in it. You know, what about I him? mean, they might be in that time when they say, like, cast of clerks or something. I, I really did didn't I, like... It's like a second, and then he literally runs away from you it. You didn't even know it's black and white. I didn't even notice. It was on the one of the I feel like if he ever had flares, an opportunity to have Jeff Anderson on screen, he would give him some dialogue because some of the best moments in Clerks are between him and Jay. Yeah, this yeah. they're just staying in their kind of like you they, know they adversarial. Like just cut to like any fucking they highlight like from those movies. Yeah, it's great. Or like the show. Even in fucking Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, just the moment between him and just in the beginning, it's mm -hmm. just it's exactly like a. That's the thing. Jay and Silent Bob work well into a universe where they don't fit in. And in this, it's too much of that, like, parody of, like, hey, it's fish out of water on the road. And it's, like, again? Like, I can't do this again. Like, this... Because they, they literally... All right, so we're going to actually talk about this now, right? We're going to talk about the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so notice how, notice how light on this, it. the movie yeah. part the is. Yeah, it's, it's So... Okay. If you've seen Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, it's the same exact plot, only now it's 2019 and the movie's being remade and their actual names have been trademarked and licensed to the production company that they sabotaged in the first place to make the original Jay, uh, Blunt Man and Chronic film. So now... That setup really worked on me, though. Yeah. The first few scenes I was into, because I'm like, what is this? Yeah. It's just things yeah. are happening. And I'm like, Clever enough to get yeah. you yeah. in. Yeah. And, and then... Just, and then the Zack and Miri porno guy is now roped into the VS yeah. universe. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's all it's interconnected. Fun. And so now everybody that we've run into in the past is back and along the same path mm. and um, with some new fresh faces. You know, Fred Armisen has a great walk-on role as Molly a, Shannon has a terrible one. <laughs> yeah, that was weak. Uh, yeah. But ultimately, ultimately, ultimately we've discovered that Jay has a love child or had a love child with Justice from Holy the shit. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back movie. And her name is Millennium Falcon. And her name is Millennium Falcon. So he has to she blackmails he him. He named his own daughter Harley Quinn. It's fine. Like it's the he's such a. It's like it's like I'm slowly realizing I don't like him. That's really what it is. It's like it's like oh. He's the type of guy that would clap at a Marvel movie, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, you. Yeah, well, he's yeah, the one who yeah. always cries in a Marvel movie yeah. and then tweets about how he cried. Oh, oh. the Thanos snap! I had been Thanos. waiting for Thanos oh. to get what and he wanted. And then every Star Wars, I saw Rogue One. My fucking, I, I teared, teared up. I teared up. It was and like my I childhood. Man. He says up, yeah. every time now that he cries during a movie, and I'm just like, he's, that's, we're gonna get. I saw Frozen two. It fucking cried like a bitch. You know, like it's <laughs> always gonna crying. be something like that. Yeah, but I didn't even finish the plot because I mean yeah. it's pretty forgettable. It's that... very forgettable. It's hard so, to. So oh Jay's God. Jay's daughter uh, blackmails him into okay, helping assist her getting a foreign exchange student across the country before her visa ex uh, expires in order to get her to the Blunt Man and Chronic con like annual convention. Chronic con. Where they're yeah. gonna be actually where Kevin Smith is shooting the reboot of the Blunt Man and Chronic movie. So it's like a direct. They Which cross is paths. Why is the explain. why is the con have the the scene? Why being is shot a movie there? being shot at a con? Why yeah. would it be done secretly inside of a con? Why would anybody do why that? Why is this woman's like they never explain why her dream is to go to the convention? Anyway, it's not so to her dad, despite any like, kind of pitfalls, is in this dad. They're all they're all missing their dads, but everybody else is like an extra Des thing. Despite any plot holes There's in this, that is the <laughs> plot. Yes. Oh my, and, but the thing is, like, it starts out, you think it's going to be like Jane Silent and Bob Strike Back in that it's a road trip movie, and you go and yeah. you meet all these different characters and all these adventures. 
But literally, they meet them, Harley Quinn and whatever, by ordering an Uber. Ted Underhill? Yo! I'm Ted motherfucking Underhill! To, to Chicago, meets Justice on accident, seeing her on TV, and then uh, Harley Quinn is like, yeah, take us with you, but they don't know that Millennium it's, Falcon. They don't know that it's <laughs> that they're related yet. Yeah. It's gotta keep it a secret. No, he does know. Well he knows, but she doesn't. Yeah. That's not even a point of contention. For Justice doesn't like five minutes. Justice doesn't even care. It's like, oh yeah, that was fine. Yeah, you fucked me and got me pregnant, but I kept it a secret from you because I thought you were a fucking. Well, drug she addict. was like that though the first time around, which yeah. I was like at first I was just like, are you gonna give him time of day? And she was just like, oh, you remembered who I was. I missed you, Boo Boo Kitty Fuck. Oh, you remembered. And yeah. <laughs> like, you're just as stupid as you were in the last movie. That's well, great. Funny. Yeah. No. Yeah. That was great. It's totally it's set like, up early on. Movies. Yeah. She's, She's a complete idiot. And her she's pet with, name is Boo Boo Kitty Fuck. And so, you know. And she thinks it's super cute. She's just like, oh, you. And yeah. she's with Rosario Dawson, which is cute. Yeah. And then they Who's just. She's not the character she was from Clerks 2. No, which is nobody not mentions confusing that at all. At all. Yeah. yeah. And she's the only person that shows up again that's not the same character. This movie's not confusing at all, folks. And then they just go. They just go on a trip, and then Har Har Harley Quinn has a deaf friend because. Hearing is so fucking over razor. That was and, bad. That made me. Well, I, all of that, the friends well, were bad. But like that in particular, when I no, I the Asian more, friend was bad. Well, no, was I, worse. No, no me, all of that was of worse. Podcast because, girl. No, as soon as like more of them showed up, because if it was just she her, became a Russian villain. No, stupid. That was worse. If, uh, it was just, if it was just Jay's daughter and her own Silent Bob, I was gonna be like that. Did the death? So no, stupid. that would have been better because the no. girls that were in the support group made it so much worse, it's man. So bad. So what they're talking about is. Is, are these supporting characters? So Harley Quinn, uh, Kevin Smith's daughter, who's actually who plays Millennium Falcon in the movie, who is not her, not not Silent Bob's daughter. No, it's Jay's, Jay's daughter. daughter. Yeah, just to so mix everything. just to make everything that much more confusing <laughs> between who's who and what's what and who's why feeling anything. And, and then Kevin Smith shows up, not being yeah, him. Being so himself. Jay's illegitimate places. daughter. Um, befriends these girls when after she blackmails them into taking her on a ride to Hollywood with her deaf friend. Hollywood, Florida? <laughs> Which is a joke they never wove into the actual <laughs> final cut. I'm happy. I, I, no, you know what? I don't care either way. Like, look, 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 anyway, three times have been funny. she has these, uh, you know, uh, militant, bad chick, uh, you know, high school yeah. friends, um, and uh, they all need to go to Hollywood. I mean, the basic story is is just that. It's just the the strikes back mixed with you know mix in the rest of the movies as needed. There's and a clerk. There's a dogma dedicated dogma yeah. scene. There's the dedicated chasing Amy scene with Holden. Wait, 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 wait. So let's talk about that scene real quick because it's literally just whipped right at it's you. Just in the middle, and he looks at the camera and talks. Yeah. yeah so like, <laughs> I'm from Dogma. If you haven't seen that, <laughs> buy it here. And there's a hotline. You call. They mail it the movie. <laughs> yeah. So he shows up just for a quick cameo at the pews in a church and turns around, and breaks the fourth wall, and tells you basically like, "Hey, yeah, I was Thor first. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I was Loki before yeah, Tom thing. Hiddleston yeah, made, you know. made yeah. it cool. That's it. And then he goes away. It's funny because he. It's he the, just fills you in. He's the prequel to the Born Identity. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's the joke. That's the. Yeah. That's the. It, yeah. And he literally shows up. No one else is in the scene. That's pretty much indicative of all of the cameos. Yeah, it's just the most outright blatant. Because if you look at the coverage of like even the Jason Lee scene, Matt, Matt, or the Molly Matt, Shannon Matt, scene, Matt, or even his Matt, own Matt. wife at the the movies. Like, it's literally like the camera's locked off. It's a two shot or a one shot of that character. And then it's, you know, the reverse for Jay and Silent Bob. And there's barely any interaction. Like, honestly, when, when they hugged Ben Affleck, I was actually surprised that they touched. I didn't think that they would actually be in the room. And it'd be like what we did for the Gemini Man. And yeah. it would just be like, oh, it's just there. They're there. Yep. Just look where the empty chair is. Yep. Just imagine where his exactly. eyes would be. I thought that's what it would be, but they, they actually touched me. Okay, hey, they actually got these guys in the same room, but it didn't feel that way. Well, let's talk about the very end when the Chinese. Well, that's when the movie. Girl, that's when like. It I feel like up to this point, up yeah. to that point, like it's more. It's 
hits and misses. Yeah, but some that, jokes, like things audibly make me laugh. Yeah, yeah, no, I laugh. There's some funny stuff in there. Like, yeah, there's some funny stuff in like this movie. Like Jane's, like the, and there's some honestly probably more most interesting Jane, uh, uh, Kevin Smith directing, like cinematic choices, in like years. with the Method Man yeah. scene and all that stuff. That was where they, great. Yeah. And then like there's like a, cl- a oh, clan yeah. scene because Millennium gives them the the pop brownies that are way too strong, and then they trip That's out, works, and yeah. then they. They get transported into, into the backseat of a car like a how in How High, how high. Like, yeah. Yeah, with which Red is, Man. Which is yeah. very funny. Method. Which is very, you know, that was It's very the best well done. part of the movie. It looks, movie. it's actually shot in an interesting way. Like, oh, they're using, like, hallucinogen and stuff to like, use yeah. the wide angle But it wasn't overdone. Yeah. yeah. And the color was nice. Unlike a lot of the jokes, it was not overdone. The rest of the movie is shot, even, like, it's just, like, digital and yeah. just, like, done. Yeah. It's got whoever to shoot it. Kevin Smith playing himself was bad. I mean, it was like he was like, I have to play myself, so how am I? I'm annoying. Okay. I, mean, I sell things, and I work at IMDb. Welcome back. For those of you just joining us, I'm Kevin Smith. This is the IMD Boat, and we are live with the writers and directors of the greatest motion picture ever made. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the writers and directors of Avengers Endgame! You know, that's it. That's all I got. And he's like he's fine. He's really good as Silent Bob, though. I think he's really we, bad as we were, himself. We were discussing earlier, like there was definitely a tipping point for all of us when we were watching the movie, and we felt like, okay, this is pretty much where I'm off the ride. Yeah, no, because I wanted to like this yeah. a lot. I think for me, it was pretty much when we arrived at uh, Chronic Con, and I Oof. saw basically what they had set up. For this us. is what the movie has done. And I was, and once we got through the doors, I was like, yeah, no, this is just shit. Like, if we got to spend the rest of the movie here, this is just bad. Because compare that to that's what happened. Compare exactly. Compare that to Strikes Back, where you get to the Hollywood movie lot, and it's, it's so great. gratifying. And you get to see all yeah. these different movies. They do and yeah, there's so many su- too. Yeah, you there's get so to many see surprises Jason for you. Biggs and stuff. Yes. And like the monkeys in the movie. Yeah. And there's now like listen, a I, I know a lot of people aren't really the biggest fans of that movie, but I love Jane Silent but Bob. If you back. want, if you want to go see this, then you have to be. You really you know, need if to you're just, not a fan of yeah, that. Then forget you about hate this. this. You don't yes. know what this is. Yeah, right. it's the reboot of that. Yeah. So, well, but but that's the other thing. Also, it's like as a reboot, it doesn't deliver on stepping things up a little more because, like, as it's it stands, scale. it gets scaled down. Because if if they had done like the mirror plot line and had them show up at the studio lot and in a sound stage and there's a big set, then the rest of the story would have been great because then it would have been Jay and Silent Bob's responsibility to fulfill uh, Millennium's happiness by rather than sabotaging the film, actually helping to make it good. And that would have been more interesting because then you would have had them interacting with the actors. Uh, some funny like physical gags and humors and things like that, like that we got out of Jan Silent and Bob Strike Back in the first run, like when they did show up there, like they parodied P- uh, like Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure and like really like hit on some fun stuff, like you guys said with the uh, Goodwill Hunting, like Hunting yeah. Season, like that yeah. shit was hilarious. Or the scream with Wes yeah. Craven and stuff. Yeah, but uh, the honestly, it would have been it would have worked if they went into like the movie studio and it was just a green screen thing, you know, it's just like all the green screen, they're like lost and stuff. Yeah. And then it's just like they're like herded in like background, and it's yeah. just a line, yeah, and they exactly. get made up, and then it's just yeah. like yeah, yeah. It's just it, like the Hollywood it, line now. It's just it's like just a studio. Very, it's manufactured. Like, this felt like like we were talking before, like together. like yeah. any of those like B list streaming services wanted to make like a, <laughs> yeah. a original yeah. content, like a Crackle or a Shutter, look like comparable to any of those like really digital like webisode yes. kind of yeah. things. Like he showed it on a DVD. Oh, and it skipped it twice. Skipped twice. Yeah, Jay and Silent. Yeah. Sorry. Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes were both there for Q and A afterwards, and that got a little consuming. But that's kind of su- nice. But what surprised me the most—I didn't expect that. What I surprised me the that. most was that they showed the movie on a cheap DVD, not even like a Blu-ray. I mean, and, we knew because at first, when the first when the thing it had yeah, like yeah, that yeah, little like kind of the disc yeah. thing, and we're like, that's totally just a DVD. It's just a and DVD. It skipped. He didn't even have like a fresh disc. No. It was just like. Just, uh, it, that was just it's in just his pocket. To feel like I literally oh I didn't God. get a joke because they skipped on Fred Armisen's line, and I was like, "What? He said a word there." Yeah, and then, and then like I'm not. Maybe they're the, say, explaining it, but now I'm trying to think of what this word is. It's and like he's played it in all the road shows. It's the same. He tapes DVD. it in his car. And then he yeah. just throws it. In, he just puts it in the this paper hunk of junk. And throws it in the back of his Camry. Yeah, <laughs> it's 
It's very confusing. And even the even the blunt man and chronic scene in this movie was like, well, it was like just like a noticeable downgrade from the movie because you get to see like Mark Hamill and it's like the practical scene and it's like the 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 lightsaber, the blunt saber, and he smokes. It's like super cool. And then this one. Which is supposed to be like the Zack Snyder like, parody. Uh, like I like the Val Kilmer. Later, you. Remember, eighteen years have passed before, but between the lightsaber scene in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back with Mark Hamill as the cockknocker, and now there's this weird shot of, of Val Kilmer who can't talk, by the way, because he's got throat cancer. But he's also Silent Bob, so it's like Which appropriate. Which is funny. Those... There's like some humor there, but like he's just like it's he shot like like sorry like right here and up, and there's like a bright light right here. And it's super weird. And like they say a few lines back and forth to one another. He's like really hunched over. And he just types. Oh my god, the Twitter thing. We called that. We were talking earlier before the movie. Yeah, that's how Silent Bob communicates now. It takes a lot of time. He types like a fucking idiot with his index finger for like, and he just to do emojis. What is this? Why is he? You push one button and emojis there. You scroll through, they're there. He's got an emoji keyboard. Fucking boomers. There's that. He's only forty nine. He's a Gen Xer. There's that whole boomer. (laughs) There's that whole like scene of like him like. Like getting laid at the movies. Well, that was his own oh, wife. Yeah. But who was also of, playing and not her same character too. That's right. She's just another lady. They don't recognize her from the jewel heist. Alright, let's not even talk about this movie anymore. Can can we just, just get like so what out of a ten, right? Like a three. Whoa. Mm. See I wouldn't go that hard. I would say I mean, I liked it more than I liked Gemini Man. I liked it more as like I a movie. I liked it more we, than like how Critters. How we rated Gemini Man was like with a three. Yeah, and I think Critters so was four, around there too. Four. So four. Four. four like Four's that. probably more because like yeah. it's pretty flatly I'm, shot. I'm gonna say like six and a half out of ten. That's that's. I might. I so mean, like I'm just kind of in the middle. I'm honestly feeling like a five. I could go either way because like yeah, I, I honestly I laughed. Four. I laughed. A, four. I thought a few really good. Jokes in there. I thought there were some good things. Well, I mean, that's really why I'm gonna say back. six then, like a solid. But I thought six. this plotting and like the ending. We didn't really talk specifics, but like, literally, they get to the con, and it turns out that the Asian woman is actually a Russian woman, and isn't a podcaster, but a terrorist that wants to kill Kevin Smith because he makes Wait. bad movies. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, five. Or, or right, that's it just the, cheapens that's the, everything. That's the whole and then she's end like, of the "Oh, Russian to, collusion." That's a joke. Wants to influence our movies, pop culture. I don't. It's so it gets so convoluted. It's like a four or a five. Yeah, it's bad. I, I think it's funnier than I thought it was going to be, but it's the worst than I thought it was going to be too. Like the the actual yeah. like filmmaking behind it and storytelling is, is significantly yeah. worse, but the yeah. jokes it was funnier. And it more well acted, like Jason Mewes, he actually tries. This is what happens when celebrities hang out, you know? Yeah, they they stand up making um, they, they yeah. pedophiles. Uh, just to sidetrack, because we're not going to watch Celebrities. This. Uh, <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Sleep was also bad. So, we got But that. Jojo Rabbit's good. Go see that before you see any of this crap. Yeah. Um, I don't watch movies like that. Parasite, Jojo Rabbit, anything else totally worth seeing. Jane Silent Bob reboot, 5 out of 10. I'd say yeah, pretty pretty much yeah. yeah no, that, that's yeah, pretty much yeah, right about there. Right, right there. Come see, come see. Okay. I just, I <laughs> we should get out of this now. Yeah. Living the life, man. Fucking A. That's right. That's good. right. You do it right. Adam boy. Good man. Good man. Have fun. <laughs> because I'm older and I have fun a different way, that doesn't mean I put you down for you. Exactly. Have fun you guys have. Thanks, man. You, you just call me. Have fun. <laughs> 
I need a retake on all that. I need a retake on all that. It's too much. 